<laughs> Alright, um, hello, uh, my name is Tyler Thompson. I am a science fiction, fantasy and crime writer. Um, I'm here in wonderful Barcelona. It's a beautiful place with beautiful people. And I'm here to talk about my book, Rosalera, and uh, the murders of Molly Southbourne, and anything else that might come up in conversation. <laughs> I was having an argument with my wife. Um, we were having an argument, and in the middle of the argument, she said, you are your own worst enemy. So when she said that, my mind shifted from the argument. So she was talking, I stopped listening. But I thought, okay, well, what if um, I was physically my own worst enemy? What if um, parts of me would come out and fight me or kill me? You know? So that kept ruminating in my head. So I didn't listen anymore. So the argument ended because I had to go and write something down. So I scribbled it down. Um, I, wasn't, I was in the middle of writing something else. Um, and it was so insistent that I had to stop the book I was writing and write The Murders of Molly Sapon. Um, the first draft came out in about two weeks. I just wrote it all out and it came out. And then, and then I could finally leave it and write what I was writing. You know? So that's, that's basically how it came about. I love everything about Frankenstein. I know a lot about Frankenstein and Mary Shelley. And I actually find, I think Molly is a combination of Frankenstein's monster and Mary Shelley, the writer of Frankenstein. I, 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 because Mary Shelley didn't have an easy life. She had problems in her life. She had problems, you know, um, with her children. Her babies kept dying. You know, her husband committed suicide. So there were all kinds of things that were happening with her, um, which to me mirrored the problems of Frankenstein as well. You know, Frankenstein, Victor Frankenstein, as well as the monster. Um, so... And if you notice in the book, I did mention Frankenstein in the book, just to kind of give a little bit of a hint of that. So I, I agree that it is related to Frankenstein in, the, in that sense. Thank you very much for saying that. In actual fact, Molly Salpon is a monster. There's, you know, she is actually the monster of the, of the novella. Um, and many people miss that. And the reason they miss that is because she is not only the monster, but she is also the victim of her own monstrosity. You know, um, and that's why it's called the murders of Molly Southbourne. Um, it's it is her committing the murders, but she is also the victim of those murders. And um, to me, every story about aliens, any story at all about aliens, is talking about a clash of cultures. Anyone, whoever has written it, go to even from War, War of the Worlds, you know, by H.G. Wells, all the way through to any other narrative you can think of. Even when the person who has written it didn't intend to because aliens by their nature have to be very different from us so they are people who are not like you by definition you know an alien is not like the place they are going to so the aliens whatever they look like whether they are little green men whether they are giant humanoids whether they're like machines it doesn't matter they're not like us so the narrative that includes an alien is always about people who are like us and people who are not like us and what they are doing to us or what we are doing to them. So it is an interaction between people like us and people not like us. Now, most of the time, encounters between different cultures generally have a history of being violent and one culture swallowing the other. What I'm trying to say, you know, for the most part, is that cultures with superior technology with superior um, weaponry or with who are superior in some way or the other tend to swallow the less um, developed cultures. They tend to swallow them up in one way or the other. So it could be, for example, swallowing up like in colonization, or it could also be the kind of swallowing that is happening now, which is a kind of mental colonization where products from more um, advanced cultures through the internet, through films, through interaction with people, are uh, overriding many local cultures. You know, people think about things in the way um, the people on television think. So they don't think about things in the way they used to think locally because we all have access to everything now. You know, so um, for me, one particular example for me is um, music videos that I see that come out of, um, say, Nigeria. Um, the music videos, if you look at them, if you take away the language, the visual cues, the semiotics of it, looks like an American music video. 
It's the same kind of keys, the same emotional cues, the same flashing of wealth that you see in many videos from America. Um, and to me, that is, a, that is evidence of colonization of the mind. Um, and that's, you know, so it, that's a lot of what I'm talking about. It's, it's very difficult to generalize science fiction. I'll start with that because some people think that what they're doing is, okay, they're just writing about very cool space fights. You know, some people think they're talking about a military kind of metaphor. They just want to write something exciting and they write that and they think, yes, that's what they're doing. Um, some people just want to write, write about strange technology and the, um, the effects of that. But what happens is we are all part of a society and they can't help writing about what's happening now. It's not about the future. None of it is ever about the future. It's about now. It's about what's happened in the past and what it means to us now. They're really... In science fiction, it's not the future. It never is. It's always, it's always now. Even when we um, do things like alternate histories or we go back in time, it's not about that time. It's about now. It's about what's going on with us now. Um, you're the, probably, probably the most famous um, science fiction um, time-traveling um, movie was probably Back to the Future. And Back to the Future was more about our, you know, contrasting the past with what goes on now. So the job, the job of Michael J. Fox's character is to represent now in the past and see how the two of them clash, to make him more appreciate now, because the end of the film, he appreciated his present more than the past. You cannot have a character exist without, a, without an environment. A character cannot exist without an environment. You cannot have just a character and an environment, something has to move the character into the environment going from one place to the other. It is impossible to have these separate elements. It is artificial to divide them. Um, the make the, your basic story, the most basic thing in the story is a character exists in an environment and wants something and is stopped in some way from getting the thing that they want. That is the most basic story you can ever have. If you look for the most basic fairy tale, the most basic child story, it's usually that a character in a place wants something and is stopped from doing it. Every story you look at, that's what they're about. You know? So if you focus only on the character, a person may not be able to place the events in their mind. Okay? If you don't have enough world building, all right, you, you can just have the character thinking and doing things and then... But if, if the reader cannot put themselves in the person's place, then it's useless because they can't, they can't, um, they can't, they're, they're floating in space, basically. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So you have to ground them in something in order, to write, you know, in order to write the story. But you can't spend too much time on the ground itself without the character, right? And the plot or the story emanates from the character. It always has to emanate from what does this character want, if you have a story and there's no character who wants something, you don't have a story. You, you have fan fiction or you have um, sketches, right? But you don't have a story. A story needs a character who wants something, right? And so the way that they get what they want or don't get what they want is the story, you know? And what they want can be simple or complex. A person may just want to be left alone, like Shrek. Shrek wanted to be left alone in his swamp. That is his primary want. And Donkey <laughs> came to disturb him. And the king's men came to disturb him. He didn't care about Fiona. He didn't care about the princess. At the root of Shrek is, a, is an ogre who just wanted to be left alone in his swamp. And the narrative did not allow him to be left alone in the swamp. The narrative said, no, Donkey is coming to disturb you. So you have to kick out Donkey or you have to come and rescue this princess. And he's like, look, if I rescue your princess, if I rescue the damn princess, will I be able to go back to my swamp? They said, yes. So he says, fine. So he thinks, you know, but then he has a complication. He falls in love with, you know, with the princess. But at the root of the story is somebody wanting something, you know, and you mustn't lose sight of that, you know. So to me, one thing doesn't, um, doesn't, doesn't predominate over the other you have as much world building as the character needs to express his want and to go and look for whatever it is they want to look for, right? And to, to overcome the obstacles. So you need enough world building to tell us this is the character, 
this is where she lives, and this is the complication, this is why she can't have what she wants, um, and this is how you resolve it. You know, that's, that's what it is. And you can introduce, as you go along, depending on the kind of story you're telling, you can introduce more wants, all right? You can resolve the first wants, but introduce a new want and a new want, or you can have just one want that has, more, that has obstacles. How you do that depends on the story you're telling. But in actual fact, those things are not separate because a story is simply the process of the character getting or not getting what they want. That's what a story is. So you cannot separate those elements. You can't.